AI stocks. Everybody's looking for the best AI stocks, and that's probably because AI has been getting a lot of attention with ChatGPT. Now, if you're looking for the best AI stocks, it's not going to be easy. First of all, you need to qualify what it is you're looking for. So if a publicly traded company uses chatbots or natural language processing or any of the tools from OpenAI, etc., would that be considered an AI stock? Probably not. As John McCarthy, one of the founding fathers of AI, once said, as soon as it works, nobody calls it AI anymore. So when will AI stop being a disruptive technology and just become something that everyone uses to do things more efficiently? So when you're considering AI, you also need to think about use cases and how AI will actually render them obsolete. One good example would be the death of data labeling. So this would be where the massive amounts of big data that are used to train the AI algorithms need to be labeled so that the AI knows what it sees. Well, eventually, the AI will get smart enough to label its own data. That's why we exited a firm called Appen that was one of the leaders in data labeling. And since we did that several years back, I think the shares are down 70-some percent because the company hasn't articulated what their strategy is beyond data labeling. Another thing that you need to be careful about is this idea that we call investing in everything with Google. And back in 2017, a number of leading pundits here voiced what they thought investors ought to look at for investing in artificial intelligence. You can see the names listed here on the right. And certainly these firms leverage artificial intelligence. Probably the only two names in there worth looking at were companies that we uh, invested in uh, NVIDIA and, uh, well, Mobileye actually was purchased by Intel, and then they were spun out again recently. We wrote about that. I'll put a link to the description of that uh, in the description of this video, a link to that article. It's quite good. And, of course, NVIDIA provides the pick and shovel play with their AI chip. So um, you can't invest in everything with Google. You need to find more pure plays, and even NVIDIA was exposed to, and still is, exposed to a lot of gaming. So another thing that you need to be careful about are these pundits that go out and find these more obscure names and write about them, and they'll get a short-term boost when the hype comes along. And I took a look at the eight ways to play the AI boom presented here by this Benzinga writer, and all of these are absolute shite, except for um, Cray, which was acquired by uh, Hewlett Packard, but that wouldn't have been considered a play on artificial intelligence. Uh, the rest of the names were absolute rubbish, and this gentleman recognizes that himself and says uh, many names on this list have extremely low market caps and extremely low floats. You shouldn't mess around with low market cap stocks. Most of them are uh, flailing, and will uh, you, you'll you're taking on a lot of added risk by dabbling in firms that small. We don't invest in anything under a billion dollars. So how do we identify powerful AI algorithms? Well, you can't sell a future AI success story anymore. So when you come to the table and present what you're doing to investors, it needs to be incredible right off the bat. And if you are presenting them with some incredible results, well, who cares if it's AI? And an example that I always like to use is a firm that I spoke with probably five or six years ago out of the UK. They're called Affinity, and they developed AI algorithms to uh, triage calls coming into call centers. And it was surprisingly effective at uh, all kinds of uh, metrics, improving them, such as customer success or the speed at which calls were routed, the uh, competency of the person answering the phone, matching the individual on the other end of the line, all kinds of bits, whether or not a customer was pissed off and, that, and the, the, the customer support agents that were most capable of handling pissed off people. And it saved the firms that they were selling to so much money that they said their business model was simply to take a cut of the savings. And they said they made way more money as a firm doing that as opposed to just having a subscription model in place. So RPA business models are an example. This is robotic process automation. These are firms that save other firms money by automating processes that are typically performed by humans. You could think of the sort of John and Mumbai back office work that might be 
automated by artificial intelligence. And the case studies, the amount of money that they're saving is absolutely incredible. And when we go back to talking about incredible results, these are firms that you might want to take a look at, UiPath being one of the more notable robotic process automation companies. And then nowadays you have generative AI, which is starting to demonstrate some quite remarkable creativity and how that will be used remains to be seen. Right now it's quite hyped, and here's Gartner's uh, life cycle, the, the cycle that all technologies go through, uh, the Gartner hype cycle, and you can see that generative AI there is hitting up the peak of inflated expectations, so everybody's expecting that it'll be able to do everything. And then down there uh, in the trough of disillusionment, you see autonomous vehicles are starting to uh, just starting to gain some traction. You see data labeling is emerging up the slope of enlightenment. That's probably uh, more over in the plateau of productivity. RPA isn't even on here. That's because it's uh, mature and already um, represented in a number of publicly traded stocks. But when you look at generative AI, it's quite remarkable. And I pulled out this example that um, had popped up on Twitter just before I started this call. And it's somebody had asked a generative AI instance to paint them a picture of a selfie at the Last Supper. And here it is there uh, portraying the Last Supper. It's counted the disciples correctly. There's one in the back there that you can barely see on the uh, far left. Uh, the individuals here, one has um, eyeglasses. Of course, they didn't have eyeglasses back then. But then again, they didn't have smartphones back then. So the AI algorithm has done its best to try and conceive what a picture of uh, the Last Supper in, uh, taken from a, a smartphone would be, and it's rather remarkable. You can ask it to paint literally anything in any style, and in seconds it will render something. And look at the fascinating detail in this picture. It is remarkable, and you may say, well, what good is this? And we're asking the same thing, but I could think of at least one use case. And on our old website, we're currently in the process of developing a new one, we had uh, portrayed pictures of our staff using the um, painting method that you see here. And in the background, we had asked the uh, design artists that put these together, I don't know, $50 a piece or something like that, to draw these biopics, and they would reflect something that the individual liked. And they would, you know, they'd take a couple days and I think, let's say these would have cost somewhere around uh, $300 for the lot. Well, forget about that. We'll just go to a creative generative AI instance and we'll never have to ask a designer ever again to do something like this. So you can see a lot of designers are uh, should be seriously thinking about their jobs when you have AI that's demonstrating um, remarkable instant creativity. Again, it needs to be harnessed. We need to figure out um, how to turn that into business cases and useful business models. Now, getting back to talking about investing in artificial intelligence, we have the Nanalyze Tech Stock Catalog. This is an Excel spreadsheet we put together. It has 460 stocks in it. And in there, we have 34 AI stocks. They fall under the subcategories of general AI, AI healthcare, RPA, of course, AI chips, computer vision, natural language processing, and enterprise AI. And of these stocks, 23 we would be avoiding for various reasons that we define in that catalog. And seven of them we like. That means we consider owning those firms. And four we love. That means that we're actually holding shares in four AI stocks. Now, I wanted to touch a little bit on enterprise AI. And you see here a number of pieces for every stock that we've covered. We've written at least one piece on it. And in the case of Enterprise AI, those are two firms that we're following. One would be Palantir and the other would be C3. Now, C3 actually is um, considered Enterprise AI by most, but we classify it as IoT. So that doesn't fall under our Enterprise AI classification. But for all practical purposes, these two companies are quite related. And what's uh, distinctly unique about C3.ai is their ticker. And you see here, what is that ticker? AI. And as we've seen in the past, when you have a ticker that's very easy to understand that refers to a particular technology, it's also um, 
subject to hype. And here you can see how C3 has had quite the price appreciation over the last month. And we reckon that's because people are seeing the effectiveness of generative AI or the chat GPT functionality from OpenAI, and they're saying, gee, I'd like to invest in AI, and they go find the AI ticker and they buy shares. And you might think that's a pretty amateur way to approach investing, but you wouldn't believe how many people that do that. And what's coupled with uh, the recent appreciation just yesterday of the uh, C3 stock would be this press release that they issued. And uh, we like to refer to this as science by press release. A lot of firms do this, so we're not saying C3 did this purposefully, but it's it's a lot of fluff. So they've released this generative AI for enterprise search, okay, an enterprise search engine. There's nothing new about that. It integrates capabilities from OpenAI. You see they mention that in Google and academia. Of course, ChatGPT is mentioned in there, and then these big um, bold claims about changing the human computer interaction model of enterprise application software. And we have the uh, utmost respect for Mr. Siebel. We're long C3. So we're certainly um, glad that they're uh, doing stuff, but we wouldn't consider that price appreciation to be anything but hype. Certainly this press release uh, doesn't merit a 20% increase in share price, especially when the feature hasn't even been released. They'll be releasing that in um, March, in a couple more months. So um, we've seen this happen before. Uh, an example would be what we called Nano in the Name. This was close to 20 years ago when the George W. Bush Nanotechnology Act was signed and uh, nano stocks went crazy and every other firm out there was renaming their company to have nano in the name. I remember a firm that actually had the ticker nano was always seeing a lot of action because, again, investors look for simple things and pull the trigger. So this article here by Benzinga uh, talks about how stocks with AI in the name are soaring. Could it be the next crypto cannabis stock naming craze? Well, Probably not, because artificial intelligence stocks are a little bit more difficult to follow. They aren't all properly labeled, but you can see here one they've pointed out, SoundHound AI. We've actually covered this. We have an updated article coming out on this firm, but uh, you could see here the stock price appreciation, which Benzinga say has something to do with the AI hype, and we uh, certainly... Uh, think that has some credibility. What's likely happening, and all you have to do is go to Twitter or Reddit and poke a little bit around and see what these quote-unquote retail traders are doing, speculators at best. This uh, tweet here sums it up from this gentleman. Heard AI was trendy and cool, so I bought some AI stock. Well, there you go. And of course, he's got to show his gains. And of course, uh, he probably won't pull the trigger on capturing those and the stock will go back down and then he'll end up losing money. It's uh, very difficult to be a successful trader because of human emotion. Now, you could see here, this is a breakdown of our tech stock portfolio and about, what, 16, 17% of our exposure is to AI. The rest is to other areas such as IoT, life sciences, nano, things like that. Now, when you look at AI stocks, you need to consider that there are lots of exciting things out there, but they may not merit an investment. And here you can see where we've taken a list of the AI healthcare drug discovery firms out there. There's six that we've covered in uh, extensive detail. We've written articles about every one of these, in some cases, multiple articles. And Schrodinger, we actually hold. We have an updated piece coming out on them relatively soon. We like recursion. They're doing some fascinating stuff. They actually look at cell interactions uh, physically to see how they respond to drugs. And Abcellera is doing some cool stuff as well. They had quite a bit of a boost off of COVID, but some of these other firms were avoiding. And the reason that we're quite skeptical about them is that they just haven't been able to make enough progress yet, though tons of money is being thrown at them. And our recent piece on Relay Therapeutics, I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. Go to the comment section. There's a remarkable comment that somebody who is very articulate and astute pointed out how they don't believe that AI drug discovery is a place that investors ought to be looking at and that perhaps these firms are uh, avoiding the dedicated biotech investors who they can't outsmart and instead going to the larger check sizes. And of course, you see this in the participants in these rounds and they note Bailey Gifford. We happen to like Bailey Gifford. 
Uh, they mentioned Tiger Global, Kathy Wood, SoftBank, some of the easy money to raise from, quote unquote. And they say, well, they'll raise a $250 million seed round. That's a lot of money. Then they'll go back for another 250 And then without having provided any data or progress, they'll then ask them to fund a $500 million IPO a year after still with no data. So the progress still hasn't been made. And you can look in our articles where we specifically point out the pipelines and where we need to see more numbers down that funnel before we'd consider investing. They need to prove traction. And this last statement was very telling. These guys manage enough capital, they can go to sleep at night comfortable knowing that they invested in quote unquote AI without knowing what that really means or how much investor capital they just lit on fire. So you can certainly learn from that. Now, the best AI stocks, how can you find the best AI stocks? Well, to do that, we can teach you how to fish. So take what the pundits say with a grain of salt and start from the top down considering themes such as what we presented, general AI, AI healthcare, RPA, things like that. Don't invest in stories. Revenue growth or traction is a must. You might make an exception there for AI drug discovery firms, but you'd be taking on a lot of risk before you let them show some traction. And of course, consider valuations. Firms like C3 and UiPath were extremely overvalued out of the gate after their IPOs and have settled back down to earth quite a bit. So we have what's called a simple valuation ratio. We have an article that describes what that is, and we use it to benchmark valuations for tech stocks. So don't try to trade the hype. We've seen some people say, well, this is a sign that AI is taking off, so I'm going to start buying not a good idea. Now, AI is a loosely related category, so the good thing there is that we won't see hype across the board. Hype doesn't help you sleep well at night. So while it's great to see a company that you're holding jump 30%, it's not great when it does that for no reason. It just shows you that that's hype. So market timing probably won't work well here. It does work in some areas. Gene editing, it possibly can work, or 3D printing, where you have a basket of stocks that are very clearly related in terms of their price movements, and then you can trim some gains on that, but probably won't work very well in the AI stock area. What you need to be very careful about, again, going back to our comment on microcaps and small firms, if this hype is sustained, expect lots of over-the-counter junk to uh, do the old change from mining to artificial intelligence. Be very, very wary of companies that suddenly start mentioning AI or changing their name to have AI in it. So I've put up another video here. I know that a lot of people coming across this piece will be beginner investors. So I put a video here on beginning investing. Please go ahead and click the Analyze icon on the right. Subscribe and support our channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today.